Welcome back to the Gentle Counselor podcast. My name is Crystal and I support mums through their inner healing and parenting journeys. For those of you listening right now, this episode is a little bit different because back in October of 2021, it was World Mental Health Day and I had some wonderful friends join me over three days to talk all about mental health and motherhood at the Aussie Moms Mental Health Virtual Event. I hope you enjoyed these conversations, which were recorded live at the summit. I'm also thrilled to let you know that we will be returning in 2022 and plan on making it even bigger and better. It may or may not involve a retreat. (laughs) Wherever you are right now, I hope these episodes find you when you truly need it. I would love to hear your feedback on these chats, so make sure you're connected with me on social media at The Gentle Counselor. If you'd like to receive an email once a month that is full of freebies, parenting tips, links to podcast episodes, beautiful affirmation screensavers, and other goodies, make sure you are signed up to my email list. I hope you enjoy this chat. Hello, everyone. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome back to the Aussie Moms Mental Health virtual event. I'm so excited to be talking with Jamie all about homeschooling and mental health today. So make sure that you have, you know, a couple with you, a snack. Totally okay if your kiddos are around. Don't worry about them distracting you because these videos are going to stay up as a replay. So if you are joining us live, quickly say hello to us in the comments so we know that you're here. Even if you're watching as a replay, you can still say hello and just pretend like you're here live with us because (laughs) Jamie and I will definitely come back to this post to chat to you and answer any questions you may have. So go for it in the comments. We want to see you engaging with us. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you. Do you want to introduce yourself and talk a bit about what you um, share on social media and maybe a bit about why you decided to homeschool your kiddos. Yeah, sure. So um, my name's Jamie. Um, I've been homeschooling for like 11 years now, which is insane to think that um, that I'm even old enough to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, so yeah, about 11 years now, um, I have two children. They're 10 years apart. So my daughter has finished school and my son is... um, neurodiverse and he's just starting out now at um at he's seven and a half so um yeah so we started homeschooling sort of um a bit from the start with uh, my daughter and then uh, she has had time in school and then yeah she just basically begged to come back and Mm. um we've just been doing it ever since and my son's never been to uh, school so just keep carrying on with life (laughs) Yeah, that's so great. Homeschooling is definitely an idea that I've like toyed with and something I've wanted to do. So I was really excited when I saw the topic for your chat, because to be honest, one of the things that's holding me back is really looking at myself and how I get triggered by my kids and really considering, would I actually be able to homeschool? Would it be beneficial for everyone? Um, How would that go with my mental health too? So I love that this is a topic we're going to be talking about Mm -hmm. today. Um, And I know we have other people in the homeschooling community that are here watching this. So it'll probably be relatable for them as well to know that they're not alone. Um, Because I'm sure that there's like this idea of what homeschooling is supposed to look like, you know, like (laughs) you've got everything planned and the kids never, you know, they're always wanting to learn. They're happily (laughs) doing it. And, and you just magically have lessons like ready all the time. (laughs) I I have like this, like almost black and white image of my head in my head, (laughs) like how homeschooling should be, you know, old school. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 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 So, so I think it's definitely worth having a conversation about. Yeah. I'm really excited yeah. to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. So um, let's talk a bit about how do you manage your mental health? Because I'm sure that you have days where maybe the last thing you want to do is homeschool. And that's an assumption, but I can only imagine like yeah. I, I, there's no way that mm. anyone feels perfectly great, you know, all the time. So I'm sure that you have your own um, barriers and resistance on certain days. So do you want to share a bit more about that? Yeah. So I guess I've I've always been pretty self-aware of myself Mm -hmm. and my triggers and, you know, um, how to manage, I guess, myself um, within, you know, the family as well as an, as an individual. Um, So I guess having those strategies and then building them up 
through homeschooling um, obviously really helps me on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so uh, one of the things that like, you know, a trigger for me um, where I can start getting a little bit stressed out is if the house is a bit messy. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about like picture perfect clean or anything like that, um, but, you know, just a little bit too messy or too lived in. Um, I can start to like get really triggered and mm. upset really easily about like silly little things. And, you know, I've also raised my kids to sort of see me as a woman as well as their mum, not just yeah. their mum. Yeah. So, you know, like I have my bad days too. I get stressed out. You know, I have my own little things as well. Mm. Um, so, you know, in, in the, you know, cleaning example, um, you know, it's quite often that, you know, I'll be feeling really stressed and then everyone will be like, okay, let's do a big clean up, you know, and then I'm like, okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, or I will say, oh, we got to do a big clean up. And then mm. they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. You know, or I'll just start doing it if, you know, they might not be keen because they're not always keen. Who, who wants to clean? Right? I mean, I'm not <laughs> always keen, so I can't blame them. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. And I like to outsource parts of the cleaning too yeah that's great yeah yeah so um and I definitely don't feel um like homeschooling every day Mm. um but it forms part of our homeschool philosophy which is to sort of homeschool like like we kind of view homeschooling and learning as like a 24 7 365 event we don't Mm -hmm. do I mean, there are a lot of homeschoolers that do, and that's fine. There's no right or wrong way to homeschool, but how we homeschool is um, it's just like an everyday, any time of the day, any time of the month and year, Mm -hmm. we'll just like live life and learn that way. Um, So we do like book work and things like that, um, but it's not something that's like, has to be done between these hours or has to be done before we do something else or Mm. I can imagine what a freeing mindset just that alone can have like the overall feel of it yeah so when Lily came back to um, homeschooling she was in year five and I first started out like okay we're going to homeschool in these hours and we're going to do the curriculum and we're going to take 100% off and it was so the like so stressful Mm. and um it was like horrendous um and she just you know we got about four or five maybe six months into that year and she just you know as an 11 year old turned around and was like can we just you know do what's best for us instead of trying to like see how everyone else is doing it and try to fit our lives into their Mm. way can we just yeah our life and I was like oh Yes. You are very wise. (laughs) Right? I know. (laughs) So she formed our homeschool philosophy really at 11. She's she's brilliant. So, um, yeah, so I guess that forms part of how Mm. I take care of my mental health. Like it's not something that is, you know, I guess front and centre, you know, has to be done and pressure, pressure. Mm. It's more of a, you know, like a flow, an ebbed flow of life. Well, and I was just thinking that that would help with their mental health too, Mm. because like what you did there was a great way of following your child's needs. And like you were able to listen to what she was trying to tell you and that's for bettering her well-being too. So I can see how that's like a positive effect, not just for you wanting to take more of that relaxed approach, but also clearly they were needing that as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. it's funny because um, when I'm thinking about if I were to homeschool, how I would do it, I used to be a teacher. And so when you're talking Mm -hmm. about that idea of this is the hours, this is many days, I'm like, yeah, I've done the calculations and I already thought about that. (laughs) So that's like where my brain goes to it. Is that ticking off the list? Because we feel that immense pressure of this is what they have to be achieving. And also that comparison trap um, of, you know, what other traditional schooling or other homeschoolers or whatever might be doing and it's so it's such a hard thing to do because like you were saying there is no right or wrong way to do it because every individual person in every family is going to be so different and I can imagine that that needs to be taken into consideration so much as well yeah 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 and every child learns so differently as well so if you are catering to their needs then their mental health is a lot better which 
really in turn means your mental health Mm. is a lot better too because, you know, if you're constantly battling each other or constantly in a space of, no, I want you to do it my way and Mm. they just can't or, you know, they're just not understanding it. Yeah. It can kind of just create this, you know, vibe of, you know, hardship or negative. Yeah, like more tension between everyone. Yeah. 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 Slow it down. It's not necessarily like, you know, slow, slow, Mm. um, our life anyway, definitely not. Um, But, um, you know, I guess that mindset of keeping it calm and, yeah, so we we focus more on, like, creating memories and, you know, um, like memories within the lessons and stuff like that because I feel like that's really how knowledge is obtained, you know, through play and through, you know, making it more fun or making it relatable and, and things like that. So, if it's just writing down on paper, mm. yeah, you know. And I think that's what makes it hard to think about too because for many of us as well as that possibility that we are so entrenched in traditional schooling that we, like I experienced that, rote learning, like literally would just spend that hour of class with the teacher on the whiteboard and you just have to copy it. I yeah. have no idea whatever that was about. <laughs> I know it was something that yeah. I was probably supposed to know, but I didn't. Yeah. Um, and then compared to the times where you just had genuine learning moments it makes such a big difference so when you are homeschooling I think there's also the idea that that is all you are doing almost like it's your identity Mm. Um, so do you still find time for yourself even amongst you know 24 7 parenting and that homeschooling element Yes, I absolutely do. So I think it comes back to, you know, my children knowing from like a very young age. It's not that I'm, I don't put my, my needs or things on them, but I just mm. let them know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a woman too, um, you know. And so I think, um, you know, we have strategies in our house. So first thing in the morning, I'm, it's quiet time. <laughs> so I will be sitting there. <laughs> this is called my office slash quiet space. So I can just come in here and just have some quiet space. The kids come in here too. And, you know, mm-hmm. we can all just be hanging out, but it's just got to be a bit chill, a bit quiet, um, you know, for like the first half an hour, 40 minutes after I've kind of gotten my son breakfast and, you know, those kinds of things. And I just, okay, I just need to wake up and, you know, get into my skin. And I think on those days that I don't, you know, I can definitely tell a difference in my ability to kind of cope with all the different hats, Mm. you know. It's not just homeschooling and parenting and household and chores and, you know, like all of those hats require Mm. different times. And if I don't have that quiet time in the morning, then, you know. Yeah, I I can totally see how that makes such a big difference. Um, so if do you ever have those moments where you feel like you need a break from homeschooling and you want to put your kids into traditional school? Has a conversation or thought like that ever happened along the way? Yes, <laughs> there are definite times where it's just like, oh, I just I can't do this anymore. I'm so glad you said yes. <laughs> I wasn't sure for a second. I was like, what if she says? <laughs> No, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's mums out there like that, but no, I'm not one of them for sure. I there are definite times where I'm just like, it would just be so much easier if I could just be, you know, just put them back in to mm, school. Mm. Just feel like it would be so much easier, less pressure on me, less stress, and things like that. But then, what keeps me coming back to actually knowing that that's that's a lie it's not easier to have them is because my daughter did go to school. And so I know what it's like to have your child leave the house in the morning, go to school and then come home in the afternoon. And that, you know, in family dynamics, when someone leaves and then comes back, there's always that shifting and it happens Mm. every day. And yeah, that is more difficult, honestly, in my opinion, in my lived experience than having them home all the time and doing yeah. things with them and learning and living life with them than having that, that constant daily adjustment. And then, you know, term ends and then school holidays. And, yeah, to me, that's, you know, that inner knowing mm. keeps me going on those days where I'm just like, oh, my goodness, 
please let me just put them in school. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, well, actually, it would be worse. Yeah. So- I was really thinking when you were saying like the word easier kept sticking out to me what you were just saying that it's like okay easier for who Mm. easier how like what does easier actually mean because I think there's a difference between like I need a break because I need to fill up my cup and there's a difference between um, the reality of like I know my kid individually and for some people homeschooling I imagine could be because the kid was having a hard time at school, whether that's because of learning difficulties, whether that's because of bullying, but mm. there's such a variety of reasons. And maybe they were old enough to actually ask to be homeschooled. So I think that's a different thing to consider as well. Mm. Um, and in amongst that, you know your child and you know what's going to work out better for them. And mm. I think for me, when I think about homeschooling is I know I will happily do it at a drop of a hat if my kids ask me to, or yeah. if I sense that there was something really not working at the school or the environment or the friendships or whatever it might be. Um, Mm. And I honestly don't know what it means for my future. I really see homeschooling happening at some point. Mm. Um, I don't know, but I like knowing that it's an option. I Mm. think that people don't realize how much of an option it can be Yeah, because it it really doesn't have to be such a big thing and it doesn't have to be super time taxing or energy taxing. Um, I think it can be overcomplicated as well. However, I'm also sitting here as if I know what it's like. I haven't (laughs) done it, but I have experience as a teacher and I can poke holes in that all day long. Um, I was actually talking to one of my friends, Amy from Growing Kind. She has a toy company. Yeah. 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 Cause she had put up a post about like, who wants to go in and make a school? And I was already, I'm like, mate, same. like, I'm not even joking. I really want to do this. <laughs> so I would love to, I want to have like a homeschooling her school. Like, <laughs> homeschooling when, my, school. when my kids aren't away from me five days a week for yeah. like eight hours a day where they get more than just like a measly one hour of play and yeah. where teachers are paid a fair wage. And anyway, mm-hmm. that's not rent for another day, but yeah. um, I'm just looking at the comments and Debbie just said that she, when we were talking about um do you ever feel like you need a break and want to put your kids in traditional school she said I don't have those thoughts about my nine-year-old but definitely about my seven-year-old at yeah. times. and I thought that's a great point because yes. if you have multiple kids you probably yeah. maybe some just naturally find learning easier yeah. or enjoy it or you know easily pleased than others yeah. um and yeah so that's funny I hadn't considered how it could look differently between your um kids and she also said that she feels the same it's a fleeting thought I know it wouldn't actually be easier the homeschool Mm -hmm. community makes such a big difference too yeah yeah definitely yeah I can see I'm because funnily enough I'm actually in quite a few like Facebook groups for homeschooling Mm -hmm. um and it is an amazing community and Mm -hmm. I I also get annoyed about the falsity around like how your kids won't be um socialize I'm like that's so stupid yeah it's such an annoying thing and I'm not even a homeschooler and I get annoyed for all of you that must have to hear it all the bloody time because it's just ridiculous yeah Um, definitely my my children are like the most social children you would ever meet and yeah but no one says that to a stay-at-home mom no no one goes you can't be a stay-at-home mom you won't be socialized and we're like you know we're not socialized (laughs) I know right (laughs) although I do feel like homeschool moms have have a have it a little bit like maybe not easier but like you know if your if your kids are in social things then so are the mums and so you're kind of just at least that's my experience anyway you know you're all kind of friends now because your kids are friends and it's yeah you know if you're going to these events every week you have that time to connect with Mm. the people that you know so you you know I was socialized too but also like what is being socialized because not only in my own experience with my kids but especially as a teacher I mean a lot of the socializing wasn't too great yeah like I got so frustrated as a teacher constantly being able to uh, constantly having to negotiate friendship issues that I swear that took up the most of my day and I couldn't even teach the class what I was wanting to teach anyway because it affected everything so I think there's also that point of you get to be a bit more selective about who you want your kids around too and I think people should be allowed to have that choice as well Mm -hmm. um just like how we do with our friendships you know some people you click with some you don't whereas we're expecting our kids to get along with 30 to hundreds of other kids just magically yeah. all day every day for you know years on end yeah um and yeah. I think too a big part of socialization is you know communicating learning to be social with a big range yes. of ages not yes. just everyone Definitely. who's seven years old and then you know you might go to eight you might go to six but mm. you're not going to go to 12 and you know I guess in my experience as well like 
you know, there's a 10 year gap between my two. And uh, when we lived in Sydney, we were involved in a pretty big homeschooling group. And, you know, even my son, who was like two and three at the time, would have very small bouts because he's two and three, you know, but he would hang out with older kids, yeah, you know, and they just welcomed him in. I mean, ongoing because, you know, yeah, (laughs) but like, you know, it's still that difference between, Mm. you know, you go to the, you know, go to the playground and, you know, school holidays times and that just wouldn't happen at all, you know. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I'm one of five kids as well. So like there's uh, 14 years age difference between the eldest and the youngest in my family um and it was so great having that mix of ages um Mm. and I love seeing it with my kids and their cousins Mm. because it gives the older ones an opportunity to kind of take on more of that mature role and kind of be have that self-awareness of their strength and you know it's really cute watching them play with the little ones (laughs) and also for the little ones to learn how to do these yeah. new things like to climb the ladder onto the trampoline or, or whatever yeah. it might be yeah. that they get to enjoy with the older ones I think yeah oh, that's such a joy taken away at school because they're so strict on like only the year twos play of the year twos yeah. and siblings can't even see each other and it's just yeah I could rant and I guess about in real life too and when we go to the shops we are you know having to converse with people of yeah. a huge range mm-hmm. and you know knowing how to talk to and and and, and be around people of a big age gap, you know, yeah, is, is really important. So, you know, I like that about homeschooling as well. Like you just, yeah. you know, you're hanging out and just, you know, yeah, learning from everyone. So. I'm just laughing because <laughs> Debbie's sharing about how um, obviously she's saying her kids are very socialised, but she said that her seven-year-old was describing <laughs> her home birth, including how loud she was, to another mum at the baby class this morning. So clearly no issues socialising with different age groups. <laughs> I love that. And, I, and it oh. gives them a chance to be confident. It gives them a chance yes. to have other adults show them respect. Because yes. I think that's also another big issue that I see um, is that you don't want our kids to feel limited because they're younger and they're aware of it. You want them to know that they're human beings and you know, yeah. they're allowed to speak yeah. and have a voice. But I'm also being aware that I'm leading us onto a tangent now about the socializing <laughs> aspect. So stop it, Debbie. You're distracting me. Um, no, I'm <laughs> Um, so, okay, let's getting back to, onto the mental health side of things, mm. which I also was thinking that that socialization, socialization and community aspect of the homeschooling community, I'm sure would be really great yes. um, benefit to you as well, to have people to talk to and to share yeah. those hard moments and hard days with. Um, yeah, so absolutely. in what ways do you think homeschooling has had a positive or negative impact on your mental health overall? So I think overall, if I like take the last 11 years and I put it in one little circle, you know, I would think it's definitely way more positive than negative Um, Mm -hmm. for me anyway. um, You know, it has taught me so much. has matured me great learning I guess myself um and how Jamie I'm so sorry to interrupt you oh did I I did just I have no idea if that froze for everyone can you just go back to the beginning just in case because I'm not sure if if zoom skips that okay Um, and if not I apologize for making Jamie yes um, no no I it again yeah no I did see that and I was like oh but okay, just in case, right. it was go back. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, so it would be overall definitely um very positive experience on my mental health. Um, it has bonded me with my kids in ways that I would have never had. Um, and you know, when I was younger, all I wanted was children. You know, mm-hmm. I wanted like six to eight children and just have them all around me. You know, um. And just sort of, you know, live that life. And that was, you know, a pretty big goal for me. And I think, you know, being able to live the life that you've always wanted and, you know, managing that is, you know, a big aspect of Mm. your mental health and, you know, feeling positive about your life. So I feel um, it has definitely been a more rounded 
uh, oh, sorry, a more positive experience um, than the little tiny negative because I feel like even if they had gone to school, like, I mean, I feel like life, you, you're going to have positive and negative yes. anyway. Yes. It's happening anyway. It happens anyway, so it's not it's not just because I'm homeschooling, but um, it yeah, it definitely has had a positive impact um, on my mental health, keeping them to you know together because well, one wanted to be home, you know, mm. and then you know having my son home as well, just you know, I don't know, it just is more positive. I don't know how better to explain that. Yeah. Other than well, just- it's, it's, you're speaking from the heart. This is your experience mm-hmm. that you've lived and mm-hmm. it's how you feel about it. But I like that you are acknowledging, you're like, yeah, sure. Some days are hard. There are moments that really? don't go to plan. There are moments where, yeah, I've had that thought of it would, <laughs> it could be easier. And I, you know, indulge in that a little bit, but then I come back <laughs> yeah, I come yeah. back, and I realize, you know, what is yeah. really important to me. And this is an important choice for our family and it's yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, and that's really it at the end of the day you don't have to explain it to anyone yeah. um it's but I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your experience because mm-hmm. as someone who's also exploring the idea of homeschooling I know there's probably other people um in this group that are like on my you know side of the fence where we're kind of in the middle there's a lot of yeah. people that are homeschooling here and maybe yeah. this is also great insight to those who haven't even considered homeschooling um yeah I think yeah. we just forget that all of us have hard days we all find certain things hard like you said that's yeah. just part of life Um, and it's okay to have different choices too yeah yeah definitely and I think too like I guess any advice that I would give is if you are on that fence to just you know find where your triggers are and find how to solve those in your everyday regardless Mm. if your kids are home like Mm. for me even if my kids were at school I would still as a woman need to have morning quiet time I would still need to have you know all of these things in place for my mental health it's not because my kids are home that it's that I have to have morning quiet time so Mm. you know just knowing that like your life it it is a lot more like you were saying for a lot more simpler and easier than you know people think it is um it does not have to be hard um it's as hard as you make it or as easy as you make it, you know, and so just knowing what you need and then making sure that that happens, um, you know, every day or every week that you, um, you know, as you live, I feel like that's, you know, regardless if you're homeschooling or not, but yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like understanding that that can still continue, you know, like, I guess for me, if I wasn't homeschooling, I would be worried that my morning quiet time would then not be, I guess, allowed or able to happen if I homeschooled. Mm. But I feel like, you know, that's just like a mental block or a story that I would tell myself. And that is not true because Mm. it can still happen. I mean, of course, if you've got a baby, it's hard, you know, like I'm in definitely a life, um, you know, a different season of life now with a 17-year-old and a 7-year-old. So I can just leave my 7-year-old with my 17-year-old and be like, I'm going to go into nature now. I really just need some quiet space. I just mm. need some space for myself. You know, I have that ability to do that because of the season of life I'm in. I wasn't always able to. And so I had to find different ways to get that alone time. Mm. Um, but, you know, just not limiting your yourself or, you know, being aware of the stories you're telling yourself and then actually learning the truth if that story is true or not, or if it's going to be forever of a story you know yeah it might just be this season you can't have this you know like when you have a newborn you can't it's hard to have a shower right but then they are not a newborn anymore anymore and you can have a shower you know Mm. so I feel like that's a season of life and you might only not be able to do something for a season and then it's fine yeah Um, I guess I like that you acknowledge that too because yeah it really depends on what stage of, of motherhood you're at and yeah. what's really hard for you at that time yeah and it's just about really considering like okay I'm gonna do some reflecting and think about what's really important to me I'm going yeah. to be a bit more aware of what are the stories I'm telling myself where has it come from who has said yeah. that to me because yeah. a lot of the times it's actually not come from within us it's been yeah. put on to us by a comment someone made or um yeah. you know just traditional expectation of everyone goes to school or whatever it might be so yeah. it's good to know that there are options out there mm. and that's what I think 
homeschooling needs to be seen as is mm. like you can do it the way that feels good for you yeah yeah, yeah. and it's Absolutely. always always an option and um part of my own upbringing was going to boarding school okay. um story for another day but like part <laughs> of my trauma is going to boarding school yeah. and so we were always really like as adults now when we talk about it um I, when I say we I mean me and my siblings mm. we're also now aware like they could have homeschooled us and that could have mm. possibly you know like yeah. removed some of that trauma yeah traumatic experience you know yeah um mm. so I also think of it from that perspective like it wouldn't that's why I was saying before, like I would do it in a heartbeat. Like it wouldn't even be a second thought if I needed yeah. to homeschool for whatever reason I would. Um, yeah. And I also, that for a conversation for another day, there's probably a bit of privilege in that as well. I think there's yeah. an awareness we need to have on finances, exactly. um, you know, mental health as well needs to yeah. come into that. Yeah. And so I think it's still good to just know that you're allowed to explore the idea. Yeah. And you're allowed to change it too. So yes. there was a period of time where my mental health, but just after I had my son, it was horrendous. Um, and that's when she asked to come home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't think I can do this. Um, but, you know, we put her needs first. And I think, you know, knowing that it's just for a season and knowing yeah. that it's just, you know, even your mental health is just for a season. So if you're feeling like you just can't right now, it's mm. okay to say not right now, mm. maybe in the future, maybe yeah. not in the future. Yeah. Or you could say yes right now and then next year something come up and it's mm. a no. Like it's okay to yeah. change it up go from homeschooling to traditional schools to distance ed I mean the options are so yes. endless yeah how your child is educated yeah um you know but you know I feel like at the end of the day really when we send our kids to school or we homeschool them we really are just trying to make them functioning mm. um positive people in the community and yeah. they're going to get there you know yeah. it's okay if yeah it's not forever you're yeah. not you know yeah. the schooling period of our kids really is a very small percentage of their entire lives yeah. and I was also thinking before I think you made a comment about um you know th moments are going to be hard so and things might be hard so also exploring and getting creative about what are some ways I can support myself with yeah. that issue like identify the issue identify yeah. the block or the barrier and then brainstorm like okay what are some things can bring into place to help yeah. me out here Definitely. like I think it was when you were talking about like the house being a mess and so it's like mm -hmm. you know getting the kids to help out or outsourcing and hiring someone yeah um yeah 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 great exactly. conversation I'm so <laughs> glad we had this chat Jamie it's it was so good talking to you about this went yeah. on a few tangents but that was great <laughs> That's um, good. I mean, I think like maybe those stuff. tangents are going to help those people who are like, but what about socialization? You yeah. know, what about this? You know, oh, and it plays yeah. all apart anyway. You know, that's your life. I and dare someone to comment it just to <laughs> just to dial everyone up. <laughs> well, oh, thank you it. so much again for taking the time to talk with us today, Jamie. Can you tell everyone um, where to get more of you? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me. Um, first and foremost, I really do appreciate it. Um, I hang out most on Instagram. Um, that's uh, just my preferred platform. Yeah, um, so you can find me at um, Unbound Homeschooling. Um, I do. I've just redone my Facebook and I um, am learning how to use Facebook after being off it for so long. But yeah, so come on and hang out with me on Instagram. I, you know, I share quite a lot I'm classic oversharer in a good way, <laughs> in a good way, I hope anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, in my stories and, and things like that. So that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much, Jamie. Thank you so much for having me. See Take ya. care. Bye.